Welcome to my smart side. I have not made a video for a while, and one reason is because I thought I lost these, but they were actually right on the chair here somewhere. My brother knew where they were, and, well, eventually I asked him and he told me. But that eventually was today. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. I've just started making a recording for my smart side. Okay, I've decided I'm going to make the rest of the video and record the rest of the video on the computer. Because that's where the music is. Here's my Chromebook. I'll let you have a good look at it. And also, look, look here, Intel, and Energy Star. Google, Samsung, Intel, Energy Star. Are there any other brands on here? Ah! What's this? Volume was off. There's thing all right over there. <laughs> okay. Side. I have not. Welcome to. Ah, oh, that's the clip you just saw. Anyway. I still don't know what this video is going to be about. I suppose I will make use of Dreamcast-O-Matic. You see at the bottom right there, Dreamcast-O-Matic. The icon is right below it. Alright, this video will be about JavaScript dialog boxes. Computers. I need to close this door. By the way, actually, the previous recordings in this video I had made a long while ago. I just couldn't make a good enough dialog box tutorial. And now I have organized myself here. Okay, part one, basic knowledge. By the way, here. Hello? May I help you? Are you the only one in here? Yeah. Okay, this is an HTML comment. It is ignored on the web page. Okay, basic knowledge. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's what creates the actual web page. An element is something on a web page. So, the text there, that's an element. This text field here. That's an element. Um, this full screen button is an element. Etc. An element in an HTML document 
which is where all the HTML code is. An element starts with an opening tag, and it looks something like this. It's uh, less than the name of the element, and then greater than. And usually elements end with a closing tag to show the web page where the end of the element is, and it's less than a slash, and then the name of the element, and then a greater than. Some elements, like the line break element, they do not use a closing tag. So you would just put BR for break, a line break, which makes a new line, puts the rest of the code on a new line, it'll skip a line, and it does not use a closing tag. Because there's no inner HTML inside of the element, the script element runs code, e.g. JavaScript. And JavaScript controls elements on a web page and tells them what to do, makes the elements interactive. A JavaScript object is something that has properties and methods assigned to it. An HTML element can be a JavaScript object. You just put the ID of the element, which is an attribute which go here, put a space, the name of the attribute equals quotes, the value of the attribute and quote, and it changes to element. So like an attribute controls or makes an element a certain way. A property is a value related to the object. An attribute is kind of like its property. It's a value and it makes the element a certain way. Like for an example, a slider element, it could have a value, which is what the value is at first. And you can use some attributes to change the step for like difference between here and here on a slider or the max value etc here's the syntax so you have the the syntax for a javascript object you have the name of the object and then you put a dot and then the name of the property and the, and the property can change like the height of a window object could change if I do that, or I do this. And a method is a function related to the object. It, it's not just a value, it does something. Functions can have a return value. After doing something like a, that, the return value is like a property. It's a value, and the syntax for a for a method or any function isn't is the name of the object. You put a dot. Put the name of the function, and then you have parentheses to show that it's a function. And function arguments go here. Function argument is an input for the function. And if you have different arguments for the function, you separate them with a comma, like here. If you have a function, let's say you have a function called f, and there are no inputs for the function, you have you still have to have the parentheses so it knows it's a function. And you, if there are no inputs, you just don't type anything in here. Okay, you should now, if you hadn't before, have a basic understanding about HTML and JavaScript. So now, part two will make sense. Okay, the window object, which I mentioned before, it refers to 
the browser window. Okay, there's other objects too. Like the math object does math things. There's a here's a console object, which is about a the JavaScript console, which I will talk about in another video. And you can make your own JavaScript object too. And I'll talk about that in, a, in another video. There's another object, like the screen, which is the screen. And, okay. The dialog boxes belong to the window object. And there are three types of dialog boxes. Alert, confirm, and prompt. <laughs> but a JavaScript array or list here. An array is just like a list. It has multiple values together. These are text strings. One value of text, followed by an inline comment, which is also ignored, which is what these slashes are. A multi-line comment starts with slash asterisk and ends with asterisk slash. But if you just have two slashes it ignores everything on the line to the right of the two slashes okay alert confirm prompt three types of dialog boxes if you type the name of a property or method without specifying an object then javascript assumes the current window object so i could do window.alert or i could just put alert here near parentheses for or because a method is a window object, it's a function. We will produce the dialog boxes in the script element below. Okay, all three of these methods have arguments. Well, I will first show you alert. Okay, here I put alert, and then an input, I put some text, hello. So then when I click run code here, that's a dialog box. And I could look. The input is the message of the dialog box and it says hello. And there's an OK button I can click. All code pauses until I click the OK button. Hello, may I help you? Bryce, didn't you say that one time you are wondering if Oh, good, good idea for balloons. If a tower pops a balloon and it sends that balloon to your opponent. Yeah, what? I might talk about that on another video. There is, there is an upgrade on the um, Cobra called Balloon Adjustment where everything it pops gets sent to your opponent. Uh, Ryan, this is a computer video, not a gaming video. Okay. Thumbs up this video if you like balloons. I will let you talk about balloons if you want to appear again on I my smart side. I will not about balloons, TD, any of, any of games. Yeah, you don't have to click the like button for that. Okay. If there is another value, like a number or a boolean value, which uh, Boolean values are true or false, used in like loops and if statements. It, then it'll convert it into text into a text string, and it'll put that text as the message. All right. What about confirm? Uh, I decided to add that here. I changed the text. Do you like blue TV? Yeah, uh, my brother just asked about that. Okay. Alright, so I have confirm here. Okay, let's see what this does. Okay, here's another dialog box. Like blue TV. The input is the message. And notice there are two buttons this time. The alert did not return any value. What if I click OK here? It returns the true 
method or boolean value that I talked about. If I clicked cancel here, it will turn false. And we can see that if I put that confirm inside or I put it in as an argument for alert. I'm going to do that. Enjoy the beeping in the background. Information about the beeping in the can be found in the description of the video. Here we go. So now it'll go to the alert. It'll take the input here. It'll evaluate it. It'll run the confirm. Whatever button I click, it'll return a value. It'll convert it to a text string and put it in an alert box. So Here's to confirm, I click OK, and you can see it says true. Okay, if I run that again, and I click cancel, you can see it'll, it shows false. Okay, how about prompt? I'll, I'll change this confirm to prompt, and I'll change the input here. Prompt is different. It has two arguments. Okay. See the alert the prom please your favorite YouTube channel. Pack pal him. Hmm, what does that do? By the way, if you're curious to know why there are two right parentheses there, the one on the left closes the argument list for the prompt, and then the second one closes the argument list for alert. What do you think will happen? With the two arguments there. Click run code. Uh, you can see prompt shows a text field. And the second argument is the default text. And the first input is what is your favorite YouTube channel? That's the first input is the message of the dialog box. If I click OK, it will return whatever is in here I'm I could have said whatever you type in there but if you don't type in there you don't change it it'll use the default value because it's in there click OK and whatever I have in there pack value and I can change it and if I wanted to I could say pew D. If I wanted to, I click OK and it'll show PewDiePie. Or, what about cancel? It returns the null value, which is the value of nothing. What's the difference between undefined and null? Undefined is used if they're isn't a value there, but no is like the lowest value. Like the value of nothing. So even if I change that, if I click cancel, it'll return no. Okay. 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 If you learned something new, click the like button, and if you want to learn more things, then click the subscribe button, and you will learn more things from me next time.